Since the very beginning of Five Nights at Freddy's, we have had a familiar cast of reoccurring characters. First it was Freddy Fazbear, Chica, Bonnie, and Foxy the Pirate. And in the following games, these characters received new, updated variations in the form of the toys, the fun times, the glam rocks, sometimes losing characters along the way, and sometimes gaining them back. One character who has consistently returned again and again is Bonnie, Freddy's right-hand man who has been there from the beginning. From spring lock suit days to neon bowling alleys, there was always some form of Bonnie floating around, and I've covered many of them. Except for one. Toy Bonnie. In Five Nights at Freddy's 2, the main cast of animatronics were upgraded into new, plasticky, softer forms with built-in criminal recognition software to help cut down on the amount of, uh, disappearances around the pizzeria. This line was known as the toy animatronics, likely due to their doll-like appearances. Like I said, they sported softer designs, lighter colors, rosy cheeks, and stubby hands with blocky feet. Likely because of the reputation surrounding Freddy's, it was an executive decision to make these guys more family-friendly. And nobody was made more family-friendly than Toy Bonnie himself, with the big glassy eyes and a buck tooth smile. Classic Bonnie, his predecessor, was the one to sort of drift into the background, but Toy Bonnie's vibrant design and, as we will eventually see, loud personality made it impossible to overlook him. Or so you would think. But one good visual example of how distinct he was, was the similarity between Freddy and Bonnie, and comparing that to the distinctness of Toy Freddy and Toy Bonnie's designs, not even sharing the same general build. Now there was some dispute about Toy Bonnie's gender when FNAF 2 came out. Due to his big ol' eyes and noticeable eyelashes, it was believed that he was possibly a girl. But it's pretty much been confirmed since then that Toy Bonnie, like Bonnie before him, is male. Also, like Bonnie before him, Toy Bonnie plays a blazing red guitar, likely frisked off to Bonnie before him and rebuilt to fit the new design. And these aren't the only things taken. While it was never expressly stated, in fact, part of it wouldn't entirely make sense, it is kind of alluded to that Withered Bonnie's face was gutted for parts for Toy Bonnie. But again, considering that the toy animatronics are newly built, this doesn't seem likely. But this could explain why Toy Bonnie is haunted. In FNAF 2, it's kept vague if the animatronics are actually haunted or just malfunctioning, like stated in the trailer. But later games pretty much suggest that they too are haunted by someone, Toy Bonnie included. Though who is haunting Toy Bonnie is unknown. Like most of the animatronics we've seen over the years, Toy Bonnie was aggressive towards the workers at the pizzeria and would hunt at night amongst them, with Toy Bonnie being one of the most aggressive as right out of the gate he is running for that office. Though in later nights, other animatronics may move before him. He will creep through the party rooms before entering into a vent and crawling down it into the office. You must put on a mask and watch as Toy Bonnie sidles his way in before leaving. Rinse and repeat with him getting more tricky as the nights go on. I've said before that I personally believe Toy Bonnie is one of the lesser threats in FNAF 2, and have had some folks say that is not entirely the case, and so I suppose game style is what really matters when judging Toy Bonnie. Or maybe I'm just wrong. Well, that's how he plays. Personality-wise, though, there wasn't one at this point. Toy Bonnie didn't really have any noticeable moments of characterization, and in a bizarre twist, didn't even have any dominant fandom characterization. What do I mean by that? Well, you know how a lot of folks portray certain FNAF characters in the same vein? Like how so many people imagine Chica with a country accent and being a sweet bird who likes to eat, nom nom nom, back when all they had to go off of was a bib and a cupcake? Now, that didn't turn out 100% correct, but the point is that the fandom sort of came together, picked up little clues, and made their own characterization. Many FNAF animatronics have had this fan and created characterization. Some of them were adopted into canon, some weren't. But it's mostly a tribute to how popular the character was, or is, with how the fans came together, observing other interpretations and adding their own spins on them. I can't recall Toy Bonnie having any set fan in presence. Like, sure, you'd find fan fictions, but up until recently, Toy Bonnie's characterization was largely based off of what gender he was being portrayed as. Sometimes it would be about his relationship with Withered Bonnie, did he want to be a replacement? Did he feel bad about it? Maybe he didn't? Did he? Toy Bonnie was just not that popular of a character, 
he was well known for the most part, but there wasn't that frothing at the mouth energy that you see with some other characters, especially recently. And there was a reason for that. Now, in a meta sense, Toy Bonnie had one big problem from the moment of creation. It was even noticeable in his reveal trailer. And that problem was, he was instantly overshadowed by the other Bonnie in the pizzeria, Withered Bonnie. The irony here being that Bonnie kinda just always stayed in the background, and the second he gets busted, he becomes a fan favorite, overshadowing another Bonnie completely. But you can see why. Withered Bonnie's gutted face and massive size made him intimidating, but it also, interestingly enough, made him sympathetic. And because Toy Bonnie didn't have much defining characterization, like his few quirks were shared with other characters, Withered Bonnie was the superior Bonnie just off the design aspect. And what helped was the sort of sympathetic connotations that were taken from his predicament. As spooky as a faceless Bonnie is, there's also something tragic about it. Like an old stuffed animal all used up and replaced by a prettier, shinier toy. It draws you in. And if you subscribe to this draw, you might be less inclined to feel an equal attachment to Toy Bonnie. Not saying that you would hate the toy on the Withered's behalf, but I am saying that he's not peddling the same sob story. But there was something very sympathetic about Toy Bonnie, and that was his shelf life. The toy animatronics did not last long at all. Being introduced and having the pizzeria shut down in the same year, they were little more than a blip in Freddy's animatronic lineup. Toy Bonnie's fate was sealed by this closure as he and the rest of the toys, save the puppet, were deconstructed, likely due to the narrative about them malfunctioning. Limbs and empty shells are piled into a cardboard box that is seen in FNAF 3's office. It is unclear where they have been between these games, but likely they were just sitting in a warehouse somewhere and then bought out by the owners of the Fazbear Fright attraction. His eyeless head and the rest of his disassembled limbs are assumedly burned in the fire at the end of the game. Also, in FNAF 3, most of the toy animatronics get cameos in the minigames. Toy Bonnie does not. Toy Bonnie does get a cameo in FNAF 4, though, but it's very small. As the toy animatronics appear as literal toys that the crying child sees a T-posing girl playing with. And you might be wondering how the toy animatronics were out for only half a year in 87 and yet had toys in 83, and the answer is, I haven't the foggiest idea. Anywho, onto Toy Bonnie's next real non-cameo appearance in the spin-off game FNAF World. Toy Bonnie is one of the characters that you unlock by default, and is in the second team you start with. He has two attacks, Bash Jam, which damages all enemies, and Munchies, which lays down living bear traps that will bite over the course of a few turns. His third attack, Prize Ball, causes him to use random low-rank attacks. Imagine Metronome from Pokemon, except it can't pull from the really powerful moves. Not much more to say on that, except his tagline is something new, which is referencing his FNAF 2 teaser. Toy Bonnie's not a bad character, but he's one of those early game characters who gets outclassed pretty quickly. Still totally usable, but you'll have to have a beefy team around him to carry his cottontail. Moving on, Toy Bonnie did not return in sister location, but it should be noted that Bon Bon, Funtime Freddy's hand puppet, and the closest thing we get to a Funtime Bonnie, does somewhat resemble Toy Bonnie, to, to a degree. Toy Bonnie's next real role was in Ultimate Custom Night. This is a relatively small role, but many animatronics were given voices in this game, and thus added personalities to them. Some characters we thought we knew well even had additional lines, which opened up a whole new world of possibilities. In some cruel twist of fate, every toy animatronic got a voice and an enhanced personality, except Balloon Boy, who, who already had the giggles and the reputation as a gremlin, and Toy Bonnie. No kidding. Toy Freddy became a salty gamer, Toy Chica a seductive sadist, Mangle a two-in-one bundle of insecurity, and Toy Bonnie sidles into the office and is warded off with a mask, just like in FNAF 2, dead silent. That's just plain cruel. What Toy Bonnie did get, at least, was a cameo in Toy Chica's high school years as one of the bachelors who she tries to woo. She's enraptured by his long ears and decides to catch his attention by lying that her house is on fire, having him go to her house after school, and then lie that she put out the flames by throwing herself onto them. I mean, fair. If someone put out flames with their body, you might not feel inclined to tick them off by turning them down, but that's one heck of a plan to get to that point. 
So a rather meager showing, a rather confusing situation where a singular character kind of got the short end of the stick, but don't worry, Toy Bonnie eventually got his voice. Or, well, do worry a little bit. Toy Bonnie returned again in Help Wanted, naturally, as Help Wanted had a remake of FNAF 2 in it. Which means that we get to see Toy Bonnie walking around in the hallway, come into the office by vent, and then stand there, menacingly. No kidding, though, this dead-eyed doll standing in the dark is pretty creepy. This is like, this is like the most uncomfortable Toy Bonnie gets most of the time. Though, compared to Toy Freddy's dumpy walk cycle and the puppet's unfurling himself from his box, Toy Bonnie again sort of got the short end of the stick. Not a bad showing at all, but he's just kind of there. But finally, finally, after all this time, Toy Bonnie got a significant showing in none other than FNAF AR Special Delivery. Toy Bonnie was the second animatronic added to the roster after Toy Chica. And the biggest thing here is that he gets a reveal on his personality and a brand new voice. And that voice is... Ladies and gentlemen, the stage is now mine. Now I'm a superstar. Okay. So the inspiration for this voice is one of two things. One, Alvin and the Chipmunks. Alvin and the Chipmunks has been around since the 50s, but they were pretty popular in the 80s. Or at least had a cartoon that ran from 1983 to 1990, and a surge of popularity around the same time. That could be it. But also, right before Toy Bonnie's debut, a reality TV show known as The Masked Singer got insanely popular. In the show, celebrities hide behind masks and sing, and judges guess their voices. So when they're talking, their voices are pitched like this. But the reason I think this is the inspiration is because the mass Singers will have these hint videos and during them they tend to speak a lot like Toy Bonnie does in his lines. The sort of halting sentences and the emphasis on stars and popularity. It would be like this for- this is a fake example. I began my quest to stardom at a little pizzeria down the way. Under the eyes of Big Ben and the four big men, I hopped from sea to shining sea to get to my stage of stardom. There's nothing that'll make me burn out. And yeah, that sounds a lot like Toy Bonnie. So I think maybe that led to this decision. I will be blunt. I kind of don't like Toy Bonnie's voice. That is, it doesn't sound uh, real. Like, this isn't the voice I would expect to come out of an 80s animatronic at a pizza joint unless it was directly inspired by the chipmunks. Anything else would have been better cool surfer dude, kid voice, even Bart Simpson-esque voice would have been better. But the voice is not the main issue. The issue is the personality. Toy Bonnie believes himself to be a star, and he shows as much by never shutting up about it. Clear the stage, for the star of our show is now here. My star is rising and yours, sadly, is fizzling out. Aren't I just the shiniest? He also makes some relatively generic comments, such as, This game of cat and person is delicious. Toy Bonnie, you're not even a cat? You couldn't say anything else? It's not my fault I'm so much more famous than you. So Toy Bonnie comes off as an overconfident fella who, despite his small role in the grand scheme of things, sees himself as a big shot. Now that could be an interesting take. Think about it. Toy Bonnie thinks so highly of himself and is in such denial that he puts himself on a pedestal. But despite that, he still throws out generic quotes, lacking a true identity of his own. He labels himself as a star because what else is there? Toy Bonnie is as hollow as his casing, and instead of admitting it, he builds himself up so he's never let down. In that way, it's kind of tragic. Toy Bonnie has been sidelined for so long and he finally gets his moment and then he blows it. He lets it go to his head, and instead of using it to reshape himself, he inadvertently casts his own shadow and leaves no mark. Except that's not quite true. Despite the fact that I just made this case about delusion and denial, I'm really reaching. Toy Bonnie, between the voice and personality, comes off as very... flat. He comes off less as a character and more as a filler archetype because Toy Bonnie didn't have one. That his constant comments about stardom is not because he is obsessed with being in the limelight, but because nobody knew what to do with him, so they just had him be the one who wanted to be a star. So it makes sense, 
only when backed with a narrative I strung together by framing toy Bonnie as this constantly overlooked bandmate, and elsewise feels pretty touch and go. Now, I'm not saying Toy Bonnie is a bad character. No siree, he's perfectly fine and I can see why folks like him. But after so long a standing in the background, I honestly kind of wish we would have gotten something a little more distinct, you know? But that's just his personality. What about his playstyle? Frustrating. He moves around you in the static and occasionally fake charges you. When he charges you for real, you shock him. It's over. If and when he haywires, you have to use the mask, a mechanic that was added alongside Toy Chica and also used for him, to drive him off. But he also has Springtrap's red light, white light eye mechanics. If his eyes are white, you look at them with the mask on until they turn red, then you look away. If they're red, just look away. This sounds simple, but like with Springtrap, sometimes a mix of static, flickering, and speed can make it a little difficult to see and react fast enough. Though I think Toy Bonnie appears at a higher level than Springtrap, I think Springtrap's harder, though I've only encountered Springtrap twice in Toy Bonnie once, so I might be wrong. Toy Bonnie has quite a few skins like his other rabbit cousins. Systemera Toy Bonnie, a reddish-orange glowing neon bonnie. Sunken Toy Bonnie, a corroded sea bunny with pearlesque eyes. And Boulder Bonnie, an eyeless bunny statue. I would rate all of these as pretty good skins. Even the ugliest, Sunken Toy Bonnie, has charm with those big trippy eyes. After FNAF AR, there were two more recent cameos. Posters of Toy Bonnie can be found in Security Breach, and apparently there's a Toy Bonnie balloon figure or arrangement in Help Wanted 2, but I haven't seen it. It's likely in plain sight and I'm just missing it. Either way, that's the full story of Toy Bonnie's history in the games. And alas, Toy Bonnie has no book appearances that I am aware of, but I'm pretty certain that he has none whatsoever. If he has any offhanded references to him, for example, Fritz went to Stan's Pizza Panhandle and saw a blue Bonnie with pink cheeks and green eyes staring at him like a fish in a bowl, his eyes sucking out his soul and making him remember his traumatic childhood when his mother used to pick him up from school late, but he didn't want to think about that because his girlfriend was coming by and he wanted to impress her because for the last few weeks they had been having issues with their relationship and if there was any of that, I'm not aware of it. Which actually isn't too surprising, considering that the other toys, save Balloon Boy, barely, and the puppet, also kind of barely, have also been mostly overlooked in the books, and even merch department. Like, take this for example. Toy Bonnie has an action figure, but it's of system error Toy Bonnie, not even the normal Toy Bonnie. The toys were totally skipped over. And look at this plush. It looks cute enough, but the eyes, the eyes... So, thus marks the end of Toy Bonnie's importance. But before we move on to my final thoughts, I should mention Shadow Bonnie, or Request for Fast Fix, a character who greatly resembles Toy Bonnie but has no known connection to him. Starting as an Easter egg in FNAF 2, Shadow Bonnie is a ghostly rabbit that has appeared in minigames, cameos, and even features as a secret antagonist in Special Delivery. He is virtually just a blackened out Toy Bonnie with white eyes and white teeth. However, despite the similarities in the looks department, Request for Fast Fix is never directly stated to be Toy Bonnie, or related to him at all. He doesn't have his voice, in games where he has animations, he has ones different from Toy Bonnie's, and he's even cameoed in places where Toy Bonnie hasn't. The only connection is how he looks like him, and why that is has never till this day been explained. Though, likely it had to do with the fact that he was a blink and you'll miss it easter egg that was later elevated to a higher position once he got popular. And yes, before you ask, even Shadow Bonnie was more popular than Toy Bonnie. Toy Bonnie is literally stuck in Shadow Bonnie's shadow. What a cruel world we live in. But that is the story of Toy Bonnie, and it is quieter and much less eventful than any of the other toys, tragically enough. But was that a problem? Weirdly enough, not really. Unlike some characters who have been overshadowed and left behind, Toy Bonnie has always sort of been there, but not in focus. Lost in the crowd or off in the margins. Fans recognize him readily and remember him, so he's left an impact despite his smaller hand. So, he has left an impact despite his smaller role. The thing about Toy Bonnie is that while he never had a huge presence in the games or in the fandom, he wasn't ever really forgotten. 
He was always there. He just was sort of off to the side. So I wouldn't say Toy Bonnie was entirely overlooked, but more that he was just sort of underutilized in the grand scheme of things. And likely it's more noticeable because of situations like Ultimate Custom Night, because he's in a group of characters who were all really popular, and it makes him look tiny in comparison. Did he deserve better? In Ultimate Custom Night, yes. Everywhere else, eh, he was okay. Really, the one thing going for Toy Bonnie and the best chance he's got is his chance of getting a role in the Five Nights at Freddy's 2, the movie, The Squeakle. And if that happens, that'll be huge. For him, at least. So we're probably going to see him again soon. And who knows, maybe he'll finally get that real moment to shine when he will finally be a superstar. For now, he's sharing that stage, but at least he's still on it. Thank you for watching.